Okay, here's a short little video on this monitor I received from a, uh, a job site. Um, it seems to be shorting out, and um, I'll just show you what happens. Let's see a little flicker, and it does it again, and it shuts down because there's no signal to it currently, like that. But, um, I'm gonna turn it back off. I'm going to turn it on again, so you can see that one more time. Now, I've taken upon myself already to um, remove the back and the stand, and uh, we'll take a look inside and see what we can find for, for components that may be bad or going bad. Let's take a peek. Okay, so this is the uh, the back of the monitor. And um, I can see that on the power supply board, which is this guy here, um, there are some bad capacitors. These three are visually bad, and I believe this guy too. How you can tell is the top is supposed to be flat, but these have raised and some of them actually have some contents oozing out. So what I'm going to do to troubleshoot this monitor first is I'm going to uh, replace these four capacitors and then try it out again. Um, I'll zoom in a bit. Okay, so there's one that's bad. You can see a little spot of uh, goo coming out of it. And it's slightly raised, bumps up a bit, and then you have this group of three that are also raised. Two of them have stuff coming out, and the one on the left hand side is not as bad, but it's going to be changed out anyway. Now uh, these two back here look pretty good. So I'm going to leave those alone for now. I'm going to swap out these three and this one and see if we can have any further progress with this monitor. Um, maybe I'll make you sit through some soldering. Let's go. Okay, here's a little time lapse of the process on taking out bad capacitors. Okay, so this guy right here is a little suspect as well, this big one. Uh, the small one looks fine, so I'm going to change out that big one too, because I don't like the looks of it. Oh, 
Okay, so there are four there on the power supply. I'm going to replace those four. And then um, I'm going to replace that little fella too. And um, we'll try it out after. Okay, so I've grabbed my replacement capacitors from my stash of capacitors. And this is a 2200 microfarad capacitor at 10 volts. We're going to replace it with this one of the same rating. Now uh, this one's a little smaller. You can get capacitors in different packages. You can get them short and fat or tall and thin. You just have to make sure they will fit inside of your casing of whatever you're uh, replacing these in. I've uh, measured it out. There's plenty of room in here for me to set this in there and this is going to be my tallest one. And um, we also have a couple 1000 microfarad capacitors rated at 25 volts which will go here one and two and again they they are different sizes and then our smallest ones will be our 220 microfarad capacitors at 25 volts there'll be one here and one here so I'm gonna get to soldering those and uh, We'll give it a try after. Okay, so to prep, to prep this for a new capacitor, you have to make sure that all of your little holes that you're going to be placing these in are empty. So I've made sure I've cleared away the old solder from from all the holes that have uh, left behind that were left behind from the old capacitors. And now, what you need for solder to flow a little better is some of this stuff. This is solder flux. Um, what this does is it uh, actually allows the solder to flow a bit smoother, and it also uh, burns away any residue that might prevent the uh, contacts from the new capacitors from, from sticking to the solder. So if there's any like uh, oils from people's skin or any dust on those capacitors, it'll actually help cleanse it and let the solder adhere to the terminal. So I'm just going to uh, add a little bit of solder flux around these holes here. I'm just taking a uh, little flathead screwdriver and getting a, a gob of, so of solder flux on here. And I'm just going to kind of blob it on there. You don't need much. Just a little. Like that. And now, if you see here, one side is shaded and one side is not shaded. Now when you replace a capacitor, you have to put it in at the same polarity or you'll just damage other components and the uh, new capacitor you put in there. So if we look at this guy, you'll see that the negative post does have a little stripe down it, a little white stripe. We can also see that the lead is shorter than the positive lead. So you just want to make sure they go in the correct way, the positive to the positive, and the negative to the negative. And then I'm just going to pull them in from the back, like so. Then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to bend one of my posts just so it stays in place for me. Rest it in a fairly good position. I'm going to try to do the old reach around so you can see me add solder to this guy. So what you're going to do is you're going to heat up the post and the pad. Then you're just going to push the solder into place. That's nice. 
other one. We should probably do this in good ventilation, which I am not right now. Smartest thing to do. I will survive. All right. The first one was a little sloppy because I was trying to, you know, let you see what I'm doing. But, you know, I'm I'm all new to this whole YouTube thing. I'll get better as a director. You'll see. Okay. So then, what you can do is you can just take little uh, mini snips and cut those leads off. For now, I'm just going to give it an easy, a gentle wiggle back and forth. Break these leads off. Formal inspection. Looks good to me. And we'll break off this lead. Again, just be gentle. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and do the rest of these and um, speed the, speed up the process. Okay, so I've replaced all the capacitors at this point. I'm going to put this back together and we're gonna give it a shot. I'm, I'll just give you a quick look here. If we can uh, see, there's the little fella right there. They're replaced. And also we have this group. Everything there except the green one you see on the bottom of your screen. All the, all the capacitors there have been replaced. Okay, so we're going to put this back together now. And then um, we'll cut to a test. And hopefully this will come on for us. Or we'll have to work on figuring out the other factors in this beast. 
See you soon. Okay, so I've put the power supply board back in and I've plugged it into an outlet and we're going to give it a little try by pressing the magical power button. And that looks super duper. We've got an Acer logo and then nothing because I don't have it plugged into a, uh, a PC or anything. But, well, we do have the no signal. Uh, the backlight's coming on. It's looking for a signal. I think we're good to go. So, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those below. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, stay tuned for another Geektastic episode. See you later.